The Internet Archive is a free online library with billions of items that can help you with your family history. I'm Sunny Morton with Family Tree Magazine, here with a few get started tips for using this vast resource. On the home page, you can immediately see that the Internet Archive has curated millions, even billions, of books and other texts, audio files, video files, photographs, and much more. In fact, there's so much to explore that the biggest single issue I found with using the Internet Archive is where to look first. So let's ease into this with the first easy tip. Get your virtual library card. I'm already logged in with my virtual library card, but if I was looking for a new one, I would come up here to find a link to create my card. It will let me check out ebooks, save my favorite titles, and even contribute my own content, like a compiled family history, an oral history recording, or home videos from my childhood. Before I even show you around, here's your second tip. Give yourself plenty of time to explore the internet archive. Give yourself permission to go down rabbit holes, experiment with multiple searches. This is a place to wander through like a grand museum with lots of nooks and crannies. I'm going to show you three doors you can open into genealogy content. The first is the front door, the main search box. You can try some basic keyword searches on your family's most unusual or prominent names, or you can explore the places they lived. Look for local histories, photos, or even compiled family histories. As you explore, you may find an overwhelming number of search results. Narrow your topic, a specific person, place, or event, or even a school or another institution that's part of your family story. My relative, John Felix, was a minister for the United Brethren Church in Pennsylvania. So I'm going to use my favorite Google or Boolean search operators here. I'm putting John Felix in quotes, search for the full phrase. He never used a middle name and capitalization doesn't matter here. So I don't want separate results giving me John or giving me Felix, I want them together. And then I'm also going to use the operator and, and then another phrase, United Brethren. I could add the word Pennsylvania, but here I just want to see what I'm going to find. Here I want to make sure that instead of just searching the metadata, which would just look for these phrases in the publication data and a brief description, I want to search the text contents so that it looks for these words throughout all of the text. All right, now it's time to explore my search results. The first one is Illinois, and it's possible he's mentioned there. This one, I, I can't really tell what it is, but this one, Church Records of the Western Pennsylvania Conference. This looks interesting. United Methodist Church is not the same as United Brethren, but it is, is a successor church. So I'm gonna click on this one. And when the search results open, I can see a page viewer here that's really easy to use. I can page forward or backward through this digitized book. I can change the, the number of pages that I view at one time. So I can load this as an audiobook. I can make this larger or smaller or go to a full screen. This section right here will let me go back and forth between all of my search results here. It's a little overwhelming. There are 546 search results, but what they're showing me, as you can see over here from the various search results, is that they're showing me search results that include the phrase United Brethren, not necessarily John Felix. So my most important tip for you right now is once you're inside a resource you've identified, like for example, I already know this is United Brethren, now I'm really just interested in mentions of John Felix. So I'm going to eliminate this from my internal search of the book, and that drops my search results to explore down to eight of them. Look, now I just have a series of search results that I can look at here. So I can enlarge this page a little bit. I can move around on it, click back and forth, and then I can toggle back and forth here. I can scroll up and down on the page to look for the mentions that it found of John Felix. And what I learn is that all the mentions of him are his various assignments over the years as a circuit writing minister in the United Brethren Church. So very interesting. Now I know which churches he was assigned to when I toggle back and forth between all these various search results. So the second door I wanna show you is the genealogy portal at Internet Archive, which is, as you can see up here, archive.org forward slash details 
forward slash genealogy. Interestingly, on, on this page, my John Felix search isn't going to bring up that same book because it isn't tagged as a genealogy item. So you're going to miss some things on the in by searching from the genealogy portal. But what you will find are items that have specifically been tagged as being of genealogical interest. Here I can scroll down and see all the different places and topics that have been tagged or identified as being of genealogical interest. I click on more so that you can see what I mean. Look at these examples. So I can look at things for particular states, for particular First Nations, uh, different types of documents, survivors benefits, military pensions, uh, birth records, lots of different record types and places, things I might never think of to search or that I might not realize are available here. Just as a warning, some of these collections are not well labeled once you click inside them and the search tool can't read the handwritten portions like your ancestors handwritten names. So if you do have access to some of these collections on subscription genealogy websites where they are more easily searchable, you may want to look for them there. Now back on the homepage at archive.org, I'd like to show you the third portal that you can use for genealogy to get started, the Wayback Machine. This is accessible from the homepage. The Wayback Machine archives old web pages that may no longer exist or that may have changed and you want to see what used to be there. Now it's only going to search on a URL or words that are related to a site's homepage. So I need to make sure that I'm using the right words to help bring up an old website or web page that I can recall being interested in. Let's say that I remember finding some great things on a, on a historical society website. Slavic Village Historical Society. In this case, I am able to bring up several old snapshotted versions of the homepage for slavicvillagehistory.org. And you can see that they've made 316 captures over time. And this is a timeline. I could click on um, older ones and follow the, the slider here to go back in time to older versions of this website if there was something on it in the past that I wanted to look at. In this case, I can see that I'm able to interact with this web page here. And I can even click through. Sometimes when you click deeper into um, a Wayback Machine portal, you'll find that that particular page wasn't snapshotted. But in this case, you'll find that it is. And the story that you might have been looking for here, it does take you to that link. So here's my recap of Internet Archive's Getting Started Tips for Genealogists. Take your time. Get a virtual card. Try lots of different searches and keywords, including that trick that I showed you for eliminating extraneous keywords when searching within a resource. Use those three different portals I showed you, the main search box, the genealogy search area, and the Wayback Machine for finding old websites and pages. I'm Sunny Morton with Family Tree Magazine. Enjoy exploring the Internet Archive.